What's going on, everyone? It's the Nisco. Welcome back to Resident Evil Remake. I decided to uh, move on to the save room because we actually need something on this side of the house. And then we'll start our hunt, or our, I don't know what you'd call it, our expedition to all the doors we unlocked in the last episode. Uh, be sure, if you're going to go the route I am, have the broken shotgun, because uh, we're going to go get a brand new piece of firepower. Finally, something better than the knife and the handgun. And I knew it. Ah, uh, there's zombies all over the place. Be very careful in this room. There's like seven zombies in that room. It is, it's a madhouse. As soon as they break through the windows, it gets really hard to come through here. Luckily, after you get the shotgun, there's really no reason to come back here. There's a couple things in here. Daggers are always nice, and there's an ink ribbon if you need it. Here we go! There's the shotgun. That is an obvious trap. So there you go. And I will take this with me. Alright, the shotgun. Plenty of power behind these bullets. Sometimes you can even blow zombies' heads and legs off. And those are instant kill. If you can blow a zombie's head off, he won't come back as a crimson head. Same with the legs, for some reason. Maybe it's because they won't be able to run, so they're kind of useless. And won't even deal with you. And there's a few zombies that you specifically want to get rid of, just so you don't have to deal with them later. Uh, because these guys are all in the hallway together, I won't worry too much about them, because they won't bother me anymore. And I won't bother them. So now we need to head all the way... Actually, let me go switch my items real quick. Be right back. Seems very sporadic today. Can't figure out what I want to do. But we're going to hit every room, or almost every room today. Because uh, there's one side mission that takes a really long time. And I'm actually going to uh, go start that one next. But first I want to show off the power of the shotgun. Eat it! If you just aim up and aim for the head, the shotgun's really good at headshots. Very bad at leg shots. For some reason, uh, the handgun is better at leg shots. Like right there, I wasn't able to blow his leg off, and he's still alive. It's the worst thing in the world to try to get leg shots. You know, you're dealing a lot of damage, and then you try for a headshot, and it doesn't work. I'm just wondering if I can get at least something. Are you kidding? He's not dead yet? All right. Once more with feeling. At least a headshot. Crap. All right, well, he's going to come back as a crimson head. Uh, deal with that when he actually gets up. All right, so here's the start of the first uh, side mission, I guess you call it. And this one takes a long time to do in Chris's story. You. Chris Redfield. Alpha Team, we're here to rescue you. Richard, what the hell happened to you? Chris, this place... Get your team out of here. Demons... everywhere. Don't talk. He seems to have been bitten by a poisonous snake, but the size of the bite mark is huge. It's not just any ordinary snake. <laughs> Take my word for it. He needs serum. I left it in another room. I'll go get it. Please hurry. Hold on. I'll be back. Hey, it's Rebecca. We haven't seen you since Resident Evil Zero, girl. How you been? So anyway, there's the serum, but you know, forget that. I want to go talk to Rebecca some more. I missed you, girl. How's Billy? You haven't seen him, have you? Crap. Oh well. What else do you have to say? Chris, be careful. Please hurry, Chris. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. But, uh, anyway, hey, here's your first choice. Do you want to help Richard? 
Yeah, me too. So let's go ahead and run and get the serum. Now, if you did this in Jill's story, you know exactly where it is, but for the newcomers, allow me to show you where the serum is. It's actually a pretty decent route, going from point A to point B and then helping Richard out. It's a really easy pathway if you know the layout of the mansion. And that's probably the one thing that gets people mixed up is, this is a really big house, so it's really easy to get lost. The serum is actually in the second save room. Whoa! Where did you come from? You were supposed to be on the other side! You jerk. Oh. Man, I didn't want to use that yet. Oh, shoot! Ah, oh, I just remembered something. Alright, never mind. That, let it be known that I shouldn't have used that healing item there. Uh, man. Get away. Alright, so, anyway, we've been here before in this... Oh, actually, have we been in, the, been in this same room? I don't know, but we're about to. By the way, that zombie there, depending on how many times you go through doors in this section of the mansion, he'll either get up or just stay there and then eventually disappear. So here's the serum... And now we need to run back. But first, let me get some healing. That was really bad. Now, Richard dying. That's um, that's something for a little bonus if you click the other annotation. But the way he dies, if you're trying to figure out the timing on it, I think it depends on real time. But real time is dependent on this game. Ah, uh, oh, no. It's dependent on... Oh, there we go. Okay. Get out of the way. L listen for it. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, for the flash grenades here, I know I keep going off random tangents, but if you ever put a flash grenade in a zombie's mouth, you can even either wait for it to explode or shoot it yourself and have it explode. So one bullet in one dead zombie or just wait. But anyway, the timing for Richard... It's actually really hard to count. And that zombie's dead. Shit. Um, the game goes by time on how many times you go through a door. So if you were to, let's say, go through the door where Richard is, like, let's say, 20 times, he would probably be dead. I don't know if it goes by real time as well, but it might also be situational. It's really weird to count it. So if you want to save him, just go to this route and you will be fine. If you want to kill him, go do other stuff. There's plenty more to do. But, uh, hey, we saved him. Good job. Hope this is what you wanted. Thank you. I'm gonna give you a shot now, Richard. Hang in there. Here. Take it. It's a radio. Take care of yourself, Rebecca. Richard! He's okay. He's just unconscious. Rebecca, it's not safe here. Let's get Richard to a safer place. Right. Richard's doing well, Chris. He should recover soon. Good. Richard needs you now. As soon as Richard gets better, we'll come after you. Rebecca, you okay with the gun? Yes. All right. I'm going to continue my investigation. Be careful. Okay? All right, there's a reason I called myself an idiot for using that healing item, because one of the advantages of Chris's story is you can get free healing without having to use a healing item. Whenever Rebecca shows up, ask politely. This room is equipped with all sorts of medical supplies. I could pretty much treat any wound. Want me to treat your wounds? Hell yes! Yeah, would you? Deal. Most of the medical supplies here are from Umbrella. Umbrella? Don't you know? 
They're only the biggest taxpayers around here. They make most of these medicines right here, homegrown in Raccoon City. But there's not much left, so take care of yourself. You can do this as many times as you want, unless there's a situation that calls Rebecca away from this room. As soon as she leaves this room, you're kind of SOL if you want a free healing. But go ahead and grab the chemical here, because we're going to do another quote-unquote side mission. And uh, I don't know about you, but I really like the voice actress for Rebecca in this game. And BOOM! HEADSHOT! Yeah! The power of the shotgun! And I'm running out of ammo! Shit! I'm sorry, it just, whenever I get a headshot, it's kind of a, kind of a new thing. But uh, anyway... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, these guys want in. Well, I'm not going to let you guys in. I'm kind of wishing they had kept the actress for uh, Rebecca from this game for Zero. Because she doesn't seem as whiny as the other one. But I think it might also be a situational thing. Because, you know, the actress in Zero, she was basically always in peril... But that's how Capcom wrote her when making Resident Evil Zero. In this game, she was just there as part of her other team. The first team to come in. And do not ever turn the switch to green. Or you will kill all of those green herbs. Worst mistake you can make. And here we have the first of the four death masks. See no evil. Yes, see no evil. Alright, now that we have our first death mask, let me go ahead and stock up on a couple herbs here because there's not going to be too many situations where I'm going to be able to get a lot of healing items. So allow me to show you a different combination of combining herbs. You can combine two greens and that's a pretty good healing item, but if you combine three, you get a fully healing item, whether you be on orange caution or danger. And this probably would be a better time than most to explain how the health works. You have four different stages of health. You have fine, which is always green. And that translates to all the other Resident Evil games as well. Yellow is kind of when you're like, uh, you know, you're, you're not too bad, but uh, you're also not too good either. Orange caution, you're on your way to death, and hello there! Perfect time to explain danger. Red danger, probably one more hit, you're dead. So uh, never let that happen, okay? Well, that was an interesting way to explain how to live and die. Oh, hello. Um, you must die. Nope. Shoot. Darn it. Aw, oh, man, I'm running out of ammo. And... No! Aw, oh, no, I don't want to go here yet either. Oh, I'm getting so confused! Back. I don't need to go in there yet. I keep jumping the gun. So let's go ahead and move on to some of the other rooms where we need to get stuff done because I can't remember anything. I say I know this game like the back of my hand, but I keep getting too close to my hand. That didn't make any sense. I'm going to stop talking for a while. That's a long enough while, so let's continue on. I was actually doing a bit of re uh, reading on the Resident Evil wiki, and it turns out that uh, Shinji Mikami, he wanted to, like, completely redo this entire game, and about 70% of this game is brand new from the other game. And a zombie just broke in. Fan-damn-tabulous. Oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna go switch items real quick. All right, I put away the shotgun because I don't have much ammo left. So I went back with the handgun, and now we're going to go do some running. It's a lot of back and forth with Chris's campaign, especially with the old keys and whatnot. And where's that zombie? Oh, he's down here. Wow, he's all the way down there. Oh, forget him then. Chris's story is a lot of a lot of back and forth because... There's a lot of items that you need that are across the house. And, you know, that's not the difficult part. 
The difficult part is his inventory. Like, I don't mind a little extra challenge. But you're taking away from what I can carry, okay? And there's always a zombie down here. There we go. You can kill him if you want. It's probably better if you do kill him. And that was a double tap. I Those are really rare. If you're shooting a zombie and you, you know, you mindlessly pressing A, sometimes you can shoot it. And I think it only happens for Chris. I'm not sure about Jill. But sometimes you can double tap a zombie. And this room is really, really dark. So find that candlestick. Oh, I didn't find it. Uh, right here? There it is. Ah, there we go. So double tapping, very, very rare. And there's actually a lot of handgun bullets down here. So I'm on the table there. And I think there's some more in this room. I'll have to check. Now be very careful, zombie. Always a zombie in there. Always a zombie. <gasps> I didn't know that was there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's really c cool. Oh. You almost got me there. Only one important item back here. The musical score. And then we can leave. And leave. Sorry, I, g I get stuck on the chair sometimes and I can't find the door. There we go. Yeah, that room really messes with you because you, you can barely see in there. And that guy's not going to get up for a while. And normally there's a zombie in here, but if he already breaks into the hallway there, he won't show up here. And if you need healing items, keep those there. Especially if you need a mixer. Sometimes there's red herbs just scattered everywhere. Sometimes you'll find the lovely blue herbs, and you won't have a mixer. But there's green herbs everywhere, so maybe it's the mixies that are harder to find. So now we're going to go use this musical score, at least I hope. And uh, this is one aspect that I don't like about Chris's campaign story, whatever you want to call it. It makes sense, but it just makes everything seem longer. Uh, right, um, I don't need that yet, so we're just going to keep moving on. And um, I got to know... This is a little personal thing between you and me. Uh, how's Richard doing? How is that guy doing? Okay, good. Or else you'll get a slightly different scene. Um, let's go ahead and put together the musical score with the... Come on, come on. Right here, there we go, buddy. There it is. The musical score. Combine them both together and you get the lovely Moonlight Sonata. A very nice musical number. So, uh, hey. Does Chris know how to play? You suck! It's me, Chris. Rebecca. That sounded like Moonlight Sonata. It did? Can you play? What was that? My interpretation is off a little. Let me practice for a while. Sure. Sure. But don't get too carried away. Oh, I won't. Go ahead and practice, Rebecca. I'll keep a close eye on you. See you guys next time.